went from viewing people as friends, colleagues, teachers to avoiding them as a potential sources of the virus. Schools and offices were closed and so were religious venues. Any place where people used to gather up got closed. Meeting people, which was something so, so trivial, so ordinary, became so precious. Remarkably, we now connect with them, with people, in a different way, virtually. Although I feel nostalgic about the, uh, about the past, I view, as an, I view this as an important step into the future. It's just that it came to us earlier due to COVID-19. The people of my country follow the protocols quite well in the beginning. Most of us can cherish times with our families, and engaging in hobbies that had become difficult to do before due to our busy schedules. All was well until 2021 when large number of people succumbed to the second wave of the virus and breathed their last. It had quite an impact on the mental health of the people but we are trying to stay optimistic. I was traveling with my family when COVID-19 began. Nobody took the situation seriously and even myself believes that the COVID-19 will pass in a few weeks. It was very shocking how fast the virus spread and everything from our school to our work shifted to the virtual platforms. In the beginning, it was very disappointing that the old events that I was waiting for got cancelled. However, online school was in my favor because I was able to stay in my city, live with my family and focus on myself. My family was severely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic as we struck by its danger twice in six months. My country faced economic crises that came with the presence of the pandemic and several other political factors. Due to the financial struggles, people failed to pay their bills, for their rent, food, medical facilities, and their education. It has been an aching time as I watched my people struggle to provide for their families and to stay safe from the virus. It was a difficult task to encourage such a large population to follow the policies. The government did a great job. The main issue was the uneducated did their best to prevent the spread of the virus despite the high density of people. More often than not, it was the educated people who failed to follow the protocols properly. One heart-touching aspect is that many religious authorities worked hard to supply oxygen and medicines to those who needed it without being prejudiced. The great negative aspects of COVID-19 for me personally are the constant distress we have about getting infected and also the social separation from people we used to meet every day. What I found beneficial in times of COVID-19 was to focus on myself and develop my interest, especially composing music and playing guitar, as well as seeing my loved ones as much as I can. The government had to prioritize social distancing, which adversely affected the small-scale sectors of the economy. Most citizens of my country felt responsible for their actions and took great measures. There is a saying, we realize the existence by its absence, which I felt so true during the pandemic. I realized how privileged I am and became so grateful for the small things I have in my life. We couldn't meet a lot of people in person, but this experience helped so many of us get accustomed digitally and my life became more globally blended. Having privileges, shelter, nutritious food, clean water, security, and good education, I did not directly experience the negative consequences of the pandemic, for which I am truly grateful. I am the kind of person who is not quite active on social media during their vacation, so this period felt a little lonely and distant. But I encouraged myself to focus on self-growth, empathy, and my passion projects. I also made friends through the challenges that I participated online and who continue to uplift me and help me develop the confidence that I really needed. 